It's time to get back to working on the new 1275 for bug eye number five. The next step is to get everything taken apart and clean it up. So I'm going to bag all the loose parts and then we'll get most of these parts into the parts washer first to get all the oil and grease off of them. I do need to get the old push rods out of the head and I won't be reusing these, but it's good practice to keep these in place where you got them. So I have a cardboard box that is labeled one through four, and I'm going to put all the push rods into here so that you can keep them in the order of where they went. While I am disassembling the rest of this, I'll get the first batch of parts into the washer. I'm going to put the oil pan in. I'll put in the valve cover, maybe some other things if they fit. So I've already turned this on and it's been warming up for a while. If you don't let it warm up, all the soap will foam up and just start pouring out of the door. This machine is automatic. It has jets there on the bottom and along the side, as well as a few up top. As these parts rotate on this table, they'll be blasted from every angle. This is a good way to get your first cleaning done so that they're at least clean enough that you can start inspecting things. We'll see how well it did with those parts. When I take the head out, I'll want to blow that off with compressed air, make sure I get all the water out of it so that nothing rusts. Now that the parts have been run through the parts washer, they need to go to the sandblaster so that I can blast all the paint and rust and everything off of these. I will blast the sticker off because these are reproduced so I can just get another one and stick it on. But when it comes out of the sand blaster, this will look like a nice new part. Okay, let's take a look. Now, it looks like a brand new valve cover. Ready for primer and paint. I just need to do this to all the rest of the parts. I have most of the parts bagged up now. Most of the small parts are media blasted and they all look good, ready for primer and paint. Before I can tear this block down any farther, I want to get the studs that are coming out over here and up here removed. On these smaller studs here, I'm going to use my Matco fractional stud remover set. The set does come with four different removers. These removers are completely automatic. This side you screw onto the stud that you want to remove and then you can use either a 3 8 or a half inch drive ratchet depending on which size you have chosen. This one is already set up for a half inch drive, but if I was using one of the smaller ones that has a 3 8 drive, I can just use a 3 quarter inch socket that is a half inch drive and use it that way as well. To use these, just screw them onto the stud that you want to remove and then just spin it off with your ratchet. That's all there is to it. Very easy. Just wiggle it a little bit, loosens up and comes right out. There's a stud. This gets studs that are not stuck too bad out very, very quickly. These studs on the top though, I think are going to be harder to remove. So I'm going to use a heavier duty stud remover. And I think this works on basically the same principles, but in this style, you can actually see what's happening. And it puts a whole lot of torque on those studs. So I'm gonna slide it all the way down that way it has the least chance of breaking at the block.
And I'll put in my ratchet and just start twisting. Okay, that one wasn't tight at all. Looks like the smaller remover could probably have gotten all of these. They're all coming loose pretty easily this time. A lot of times your head studs, they're really stuck in there and it does take a lot to remove them, but we got pretty lucky this time. Now I can get the block up on the bench and finish the disassembly. Next, I can take out the distributor drive that's driven off of a gear on the camshaft. There's a gear right here and there's another gear on the camshaft itself. So as the camshaft turns, it turns this drive for the distributor. Now let's take off the main bearing caps. Sometimes these caps can be hard to remove, so I like to squeeze the bolts together. And usually you can use the leverage of the bolts to get them to knock loose, but looks like these are all on there pretty good. There we go. Oh yeah, this bearing is worn down to the copper. So this bearing definitely needed replaced. The front bearing is not worn as much, but this is still too much. And here's the rear bearing. Now the crankshaft should just lift out. And by the way, the proper way to store a crankshaft is to store it on its end. So you wanna stand it up like this if you can, or hang it. For a small crankshaft like this, it's probably not as much of a big deal, but if you have a very long crankshaft, you generally don't want to set it down in this orientation. Let's get these old bearings out. Here are the two thrust bearings for the middle journal. The lower bearing must still be stuck to the crankshaft on this one. It's interesting, these top bearing halves are not as worn as much as they were on the other side. And here's the rear one. The only thing left now is the oil pump and then the camshaft. Before I can move the oil pump, I need to bend these locking tabs down. It's okay that they're splitting from stress because I can get new locking tabs. Now I should be able to remove these. And I'm going to use these bolts to help me get the oil pump out. This is the oil pump. As I spin this, you can see the impellers there inside the cavities. It's always a good idea to take this further apart and check it out before you put the engine back together in case you need to replace some pieces in your oil pump. 
and now the camshaft should just slide right out. There we go. Now the block itself is ready to go into the engine washer. I'll get this washed off and then everything needs to go to the machine shop. So let's get this in the engine washer and clean it up. Okay, I've got the block in the washer. Let's let this run. All right, let's see what we've got. Yeah, that is really clean now. I need to get this out now. I need to dry everything off so that nothing rusts. Now that everything is cleaned up, I need to get the block and the head over to the machine shop. I'll get the pistons over there. We'll figure out how far we need to bore this block out. Uh, one little trick I do is you can zip tie your crankshaft standing up there. It's not going to fall off your table. In the next video, I'll go over all the new parts and everything that needed to be done to make this engine right again. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.